Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna go over a DFC reactor designed using four cores. Basically, two sets of binary DFC reactors interconnected with each other. It fits perfectly in a single chunk, is redstone controlled, and the power it produces is over one petahertz per second. It runs using xenon gas and liquid oxygen, something which you can set production lines for pretty easily. So yeah, this is the design. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. So here's an expanded up view of the entire reactor for those of you who want to build this in your own fashion and are only here for the values of the emitters to run the reactor safely. So the design is the same and the emitter values are as follows. So the emitters on the inside are set to 2, can set them any higher and the outside emitters are set to 1. So basically that's the setup 1, 2, 2, 1. The fuel remains the same, xenon gas and liquid oxygen. Then we have separate redstone lines for powering the emitters and the stabilizers, which is how it should be. And now if we turn on the reactor or the basically two emitters on the inside, it will already produce 777 terawatts per second. And now turning on the remaining two emitters on the outside, this will push the reactor to the maximum power, which is 1.17 peta HG per second. So that's the maximum power output of this design. And by the way, you can explode it if you turn on the stabilizer or sorry turn off the stabilizer before you turn off the emitters. So in order to prevent this we need the high energy field jammer which is pretty important when dealing with DFC reactors. Now in order to craft this you will need alexandrite and you can obtain this from the creative menu. But what the high energy field jammer does is basically it blocks every Fock Wagner field explosion in a 300 block radius if I remember correctly. So yeah no matter how many times you throw this it won't explode same goes for the dfc and here's the crafting recipe for the high energy field jammer as i said you will need alexandrite to craft it but it's pretty important so now we set up the chunk in which the reactor will be and for this i am going to divide the entire chunk into four equal parts so basically four parts of eight by eight and i'm going to color code them alternatively using yellow and black pole the middle portion is going to be reinforced to create and now from the center we come out by two blocks in every direction like this because then on the third block we can start building our dfc by placing down the fuel emitter so the fuel injectors four of them will be placed like this and then we can get rid of the temporary blocks and then leaving a five block gap in the middle on the sixth one place down the dark fusion core on top place down five more temporary blocks leave one block gap like this and place down a stabilizer. Now this step is important as it prevents damage in survival mode. So yeah, repeat this process for every other fuel injector that we have. And in this way, we are going to set up a total of four cores with stabilizers on top and fuel injectors on the bottom. And there goes our last stabilizer. Now we set the emitters and the receiver. So for the emitter, place down three blocks leave one block gap and then another one block and then based on that place down the emitter so basically emitter and receivers will be three blocks away the stabilizer and fuel injector will be five blocks away in order to make this fit perfectly into this chunk so there goes our two emitters and now intersecting them we are also going to place down two more just make sure you don't place any emitters facing each other so there are four emitters now which will intersect and then on the opposite end of the emitters we place down four receivers. So there goes a three and finally here's the fourth one. So that's all of the receivers done and with that the emitter receiver setup is complete. The reactor should start looking something like this. Now for the core of this reactor, I'm going with Thingy, which is the most powerful core. You can't obtain it from NEI or in the creative menu. This is the crafting recipe. And once crafted, you are going to need a total of four of these. Uh, bit expensive, but for the amount of power that we are going to get, I guess it's worth it. And for the catalyst, you can use any uh, that you wish. I'm going with something uh, of a color which contrasts or basically looks good when alternated. So that's all set. Now we set up the pipes for cryogel, which is a pretty important step. Otherwise, the emitters and receiver will turn into lava as soon as activated. So set up fluid ducts below every emitter and receiver 
connect them all as all of them need cryogel and to monitor how much we are using i am going to set up a fluid gauge and this is going to be an infinite barrel or basically i am going to use infinite barrel in the whole video as the factory setup for this is coming on later now for the fuel we are going to use xenon gas and also liquid oxygen but uh, deuterium also has the same value as xenon gas so i think if you use deuterium it should give the same power as well so in the fuel injector set one side of all of them to liquid oxygen and set the other side to xenon gas so that's the last injector done and now we can connect all of the fuel injectors with two separate fuel lines one for the xenon gas and one for liquid oxygen so there goes a second line like this and here once again i'm going to set up infinite barrels we are going to consume xenon gas and liquid oxygen at uh, what 53000 millibuckets per second so yeah but now every core should be full of fuel uh, we place down the stabilizer lens in each of the stabilizer and set them to 100 and yeah don't forget this step otherwise the reactor will go boom and once that's done we connect everything with the uh, wires you can use solid cables i'm just using the normal connectors and the cable drum in order to connect all of these so the stabilizers as i said will be on a separate line and the emitters will be on a separate line because you want to uh, basically control them separately and here i'm going to supply with an infinite battery but it will consume at max uh, what roughly 8 giga g per second and now setting up the receivers in the same way and by the way in this setup make sure to place down the high energy field jammer that is why i uh, showcase that first because uh, anywhere just place down a high energy field jammer so even if the dfc blows up it won't destroy any blocks it will just try to blow up it can so you can turn off the emitters and then it will stop blowing up so yeah that is all the cable work done now in order to control uh, it with redstone i am going to use the receiver on the switches emitter and stabilizer respectively and the first transmitter will be for stabilizer the second transmitter will be for emitter and then place down levers so now turning on the stabilizer switch will turn on the stabilizer giving a field of 100 we are not going to turn on the emitter switch just yet because we have to set up the emitter level right now so the inner emitters will be set to 2 as i said and also turn them on as they have no power they will emit or they won't emit any beam but yeah make sure to turn them on so that it's easy to control them with redstone and now we can turn the emitters on and that will start the entire setup so we are going to get 1.17 peta g per second the reactor is stable and uh, here the stabilizing field if we take a look at it 2% heat saturation for the core which is in very middle and 90% heat saturation for every other core so yeah and if you turn on or uh, turn off the lever for emitter slowly uh, the emitters will run out of power and that will shut off the course it will take some time but yeah you can do that alternatively you can also turn off the fuel supply for the dfc cores, and that will also turn them off so once that's done and by the way this is the fuel setup that i was talking about i was working on it yesterday for nearly the whole afternoon uh, this is a binary setup which uses what 18,000 millibuckets per second of xenon and liquid oxygen and everything can be produced using water so water when goes in a chemical factory gives liquid hydrogen and oxygen this liquid oxygen then goes into three more chemical factories providing us with xenon gas using the boosted lint xenon cycle so yeah this is how you can produce infinite amounts of oxygen and xenon gas for the entire setup that we have but we will need to expand the factory a little bit because this is only 18,000. I will make a video on that soon here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this design. If you did, please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have any thoughts on this reactor, please let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out and stay safe, my guys.